Randy, will you open with a prayer, please? Lord, we thank you for this another day that you've granted us. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to come out to your house today. You know, it's not an accident we're here. It's your mercy and your grace you allow us to be here. And while we're here today, Lord, we come we pray to worship you in spirit and in truth and help us to lay aside the cares of this life. Lord, that that might take place here. We pray that you come and direct us with your spirit and take control of this service, Lord, that everything is said and done to be pleasing to you. We're so thankful for the joys of salvation in our homes and our families, the blessings you give us, and whatever problems we might have as we travel through this life. There's nothing that's too big for you. We can cast all of our care upon you for you care for us. We pray for those that that's not here today can be here for purposes and reasons. We remember the sick today. We continue to pray for healing. We thank you for Vernon Ribby's here today. It's good to see him, Lord. Yes. You told us you'd never leave us or forsake us. You'd always make a way for us. We pray for every soul that don't know you today in that free part of yes, sin. Yes, Jesus. Uh, you draw them with your precious spirit. It's not your will they will perish, but all will come to repentance. We pray for this nation and the directions of it. Our leaders today, every soul today, Lord, they seek your will. Be with us now. We pray for Brother Brad, who breaks the bread of life and preaches yes. his precious word. We might receive what we need here today. And you told us you'd give us whatever we need, Lord. We pray and ask these things and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Chris, uh, New Year's Eve, Brother Brad had a little sermon on light. And I've been thinking about that light. You know, God put a little light in all of us. But whether we use it or not, that's left up to us. And you know what? We need to use it more now than we ever did. Because this world is in a terrible shape. Amen. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Oh, there's a little light in all of us by God's design. And you can't be a beacon if that light don't shine. Right, How can you ask for truth when you do not truthfully? How can you ask forgiveness when you do not forgive? I don't mean to bring you down or speak to you unkind. But you can't be a beacon if that light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. Your light don't shine. How can you ask a child to be honest and true when he can only judge by what he sees in you? How can you offer vision yet walk around blind? No, you can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. Oh, there's a little light in all of us by God's design. God's love surround you. May you find a brighter day. May he grant you peace you seek in every day. God's light burns in each light in yours and mine. Yes, you can be a beacon if you just let it shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. You can't be a beacon if your light don't shine. There's a little light in all of us by God's design. But you can't be a beacon if you just let it shine. But you can be a beacon if you just let it shine. Amen. That's right, amen. amen. <laughs> I haven't done this song in many years, and I've run across it. And and I thought, well, yeah, I'm going to try it again today. <laughs> so if I mess up, hey, that's me. <laughs> where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Need a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go, 
but to the Lord. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving along to face temptation so where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me. God's own word. Yet when I face such a hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my Go anywhere else. Sure it is. There ain't nowhere else to go. Right. right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think Jesus made that comment. He said to Peter, he said, Peter, what about you? Uh, Jesus got done telling them some real hard things for them to comprehend, and many of them, the Bible said, left. He said, Peter, what about you? In a sense, if you read that, it might, I might be paraphrasing it, but he said, I ain't got nowhere else to go. And how true that is. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles this morning. Let's go to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 20. <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 20. Let me start with verse 1. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah said uh, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. He said, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. <clears throat> then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore uh, Isaiah was uh, gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. 
And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? You know what he's talking about, the sun. I'm going to move it. I'll move it ten degrees forward, or I'll move it ten degrees back. In verse 10, and Hezekiah answered, it's a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord and brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. You know, I often think, that especially the first Sunday, you know, the fact is every Sunday I've got to do some motivation, don't I? Some of you have had a rough week and you need to get lifted up, build up, and we got to go out there. We got to say, charge, amen. And I want to do that. I want to motivate. I want to encourage. I want to charge you. I want to warn you. You know, I, I'm glad for the last year. But you know what? We got a new year now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I want to ask you a question. And really, the title of my message this morning is If you had more time, if you had more time, what would you do? If you had more time, what would you do? As we look at this, the life here a little bit of, of Hezekiah, we find here, first of all, uh, you know, uh, Hezekiah was a king that the Bible says in the very first phrase, it says, in those days. There was good times that was happening at first. Hezekiah, he, he had reigned now for 14 years, and he was a king that was uh, the greatest king since David. For he did many mighty good things. He, the people of God had gotten away from worship. They got away from the Passover and celebrating the Passover, the blood, uh, uh, praise God, that was, was shed. And, and praise God, you know what? We ought to be excited about the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And he got him excited about the blood. He got him excited about the Passover. You can read there's chapters about it where they brought in the sacrifices. They brought in the instruments. They brought in the music. They brought in the singers, and boy, they had a worship service. It said they hadn't had joy in a service like that since the days of Solomon. Hezekiah did some, he, got, he cleaned up the place. He cleaned up the town. And he got, every, he got all the wickedness. He stopped all the sinful things that were taking place. And we find, boy, what a great time that was taking place. But we find here, and at the, in, these last, in, these, in these days here, we find that there was now a problem. The first situation, I didn't really read here, but we kind of indicated there was a situation we find the Assyrians are coming. The Assyrians are going to attack them. They're surrounding them. And they're on their way. And the Assyrians are a mighty army. This mighty, mighty army that is coming, they've gone already through other nations. And you know what they did? They took them over. And whatever God they came in contact with and said, we're going to take care of you, they destroyed it. So they're thinking pretty high of themselves. And they have destroyed all, and now they're coming to Israel. And they, they told Israel, they tried to put a, a word in their ear, and they said a number of times, if you study this, uh, they said, don't you listen to Hezekiah. And you know what Hezekiah says? He says, don't worry, the Lord's going to take care of it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. I believe that, don't you? Yeah. But I tell you what, they were pretty persuasive. They said, by the way, have you noticed that all the different nations we've taken over? Everyone else said the same thing. We're gonna, we, our God will handle it. But guess what? Their God didn't handle it. So we find there's a, a little fear going on. The people are a little worried that this mighty army is coming upon them. It looked kind of bleak in many ways. And at the same time, in the midst of all this, guess what? Hezekiah is sick. 
You know how it is to be sick. I, I've been pretty healthy all through the, all, all year. I just bossed, I, I shouldn't have patted myself on the back and said anything. And not until really the last two weeks, all of a sudden I just had a, I don't know, the crud. I don't know what it is, but it just, it kind of drains you. You don't feel quite right. You can't sleep too good. In the last two weeks, it's been like that. And you know what? That's the busiest time of the year. Amongst all this is taking place, Hezekiah, he was sick. Now, Hezekiah is probably like everybody else, and I, I, it's amazing how many, he had a boil, he had a big problem. And folks would come to him, and they would say, well, Hezekiah, you, you're going to be okay? And you know what? I've seen it. I've seen folks on the deathbed. And you know what they'll say? I'm going to get through this. I don't know. They don't want to face reality. You know, someday you're going to die. Someday you're going to get through that. And I think you need to prepare yourself for that. And by the way, we'll find, you know what happened here? Isaiah came to him and he said, you know what? This is a little more serious than you realized. He said, you're going to die. And you know what he said? He said, get ready. Prepare your house. Get everything in order. Because you are not going to live. Wow. Quite the setting here. By the way, we find that Hezekiah is, how old is he? He's 39 years old. 39 years old. You know, as I thought about that, uh, you know what I believe the Lord would like to tell you this morning? Set your house in order. Uh, don't wait some other time. Apparently Hezekiah needed to get some things in order. You know, I don't know what it is, but there's things in your life that the Lord would say you need to get in an order. Because you don't know, you can just be 39 years old and you can die. You can be 20 years old, you can be a teenager, you can be a young person. It doesn't matter. But we're kind of like Hezekiah. We kind of, I'll be all right. We don't know that. You know what we need to prepare for? Meeting him. I'm glad to tell you what, I'm ready to meet him. That's why I can sing the songs, amen, face to face. I can sing the song, Blessed Assurance. I can sing that uh, with a joy and with excitement, amen, this morning. Because I was a day in my life, I prepared for the trip. My bags are packed, amen. And when he calls me, I'm going, amen. Hallelujah. Have you prepared for that day? If you haven't prepared for that day, it ought to weigh heavy upon you right now. Because you're not promised. I put in the bulletin, boast not thyself of tomorrow. You know what? We're not, we're not promised tomorrow. We think we are. Hezekiah thought he was promised tomorrow. But you know what? He... He, reality hit, and God says, you're going to die. Well, we find, we find that that was his present problem, but you know what Hezekiah did? He prayed. He prayed. I, I don't think it would just pray. It was not no casual prayer. He pleaded. You know, it would be good to have some pleading. He had some tears, you'll find when you read that. But you know what? God had already had it all planned. The day of Hezekiah's departure was on the calendar. It was. I hear people say, well, you know, no matter what, I just can't change it. Well, I don't know about that. You know what I believe? I believe in prayer. Anybody believe in prayer? Now, I think what's kind of interesting about this I wonder, I wonder if he, it's the first time he prayed about it. He'd been sick a while. He's not able to get out. He's got a pretty big problem. And you know, there's a lot of Hezekiahs, a lot like we are. Sometimes we don't pray when we should. I was kind of, kind of, this week I was coming home and I was, I've been having a rough, I've been having to sleep on the couch. Just, you know, we're okay, me and my wife, but... Uh, um, I had just been coughing there and I just can't, you know, so I want to be set up. So I've been going out there and I, all of a sudden it dawned on me. You know what it dawned on me? 
And I was ashamed. I hadn't asked the Lord to take care of it. That's the preacher. I'm sorry. You know what I did? I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I can't believe. Oh, I prayed for others. But I didn't say, Lord, take that, take that cold. Would you help me? Right. Now, you know what? That night was the first night I slept all night in bed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's good. Yeah. But Hezekiah there, all of a sudden now, it got real bad. He said, oh, I guess I'm going to die. This is serious. I guess I'll pray. Now, what's interesting to me about Hezekiah, you know, if you read what we just read there, you know the reason he gives for God to heal him? He said, well, I've been good. That's what Hezekiah said. He not only did he say he was good, he uses the word perfect. He said, you know, God, I've been good. I've been perfect. You know all I've done. You know what he's pretty much saying? I deserve to live. You know, uh, I believe a lot of times we do that. We think we're good enough. I want you to know this morning, you don't deserve anything. Right. Yeah. You know what this is a great story of? Of grace. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what. He said, God, you ought to do this because I'm good and I, you know I'm perfect. I've done great things. Look what I've done. What a mighty God we have. Praise the Lord. We find uh, God gave Hezekiah some promises. We find there, he says, I'm going to, he says, okay, I heard your cry. And by the way, now, God doesn't tell us that, but it's not because you're good, Hezekiah. It's because I'm good. Yeah. He's good. And he said, you know what? I'm going to heal you. Whew. Boy, I tell you, that's some good words, isn't it? God answers prayer. Then he also said, it's kind of interesting, verse 5. He said, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord God of David, my father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. And then it says also, on the third day, thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. <laughs> Amen, I like that. You know what he said? You're going to get to go to church. Amen. Now, I know some of you, when you're out, I don't know about you, if I'm sick or something, but I miss church. Amen. I tell you what, now, I don't, if, I, if I'm sick, and I don't necessarily miss work. That's right. But you know what I do? I miss church. And I think Hezekiah maybe must have been that way. He said, you know what? I'm going to heal you. And guess what? In three days, you'll get to go to church. You know what? A child of God ought to be excited about going to church. There's something wrong if her not excited about going to church. And I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you what's church. Church is just a place we can come and we say, thank you, Lord. You're wonderful. All that I have is because of you. He promised him that. And boy, hallelujah, I like that promise. Well, he not didn't promise just, just that, amen. He said, by the way, I'm going to heal you, and I'm going to give you 15 more years. He didn't say, well, I'll give you a little more time because I know you've got to get some things in order. I'm going to give you 15 more years. And then he said, by the way, I will also deliver you from that Assyrians. The ones that say they're going to take over. Ha! Huh. I'm going to take care of them. Boy, I tell you, I tell you what, I'm glad for the promises of God, aren't you? I tell you what, how wonderful the promises of God are. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Look what it said in verse 7. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs, and they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. You know what they did? They went to CVS. <laughs> and they got some figs. What kind of figs do you want? The boil kind. You know what? I told you what I was ashamed. I hadn't prayed to the Lord and asked him to help me. And you know what? You know, really, 
Now, God, I'm giving God all the glory. I was able to sleep in the bed that night. But you know what I did? I went and got some fig. I've been on the wrong fig. Some of you know my favorite fig, and it wasn't working. Okay? The fig I used, this was called Benadryl. It worked. You know, God will even use, use that. You say, well, boy, God touched me. You know it. He said, well, why don't you go get a fig? He gave us a brain, didn't he? He gave us, he'd get some common sense, amen? And praise God, we find that, praise God, he, but praise God, he had a promise that came from God. He ought to have been excited. Amen. We ought to be excited this morning about the promises of God. Amen. He hears us. He provides for us. He's my best friend. He's my all. He's the one that loves me and cares for me. He's the one that's coming for me. Amen. I'm standing on the promises of God. But you know what Hezekiah did? This kind of makes a turn. It's just kind of amazing. Look there in verse 8. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign of the Lord that he'll do, heal me, and that I'll go up into the house of the Lord the third day? You know what he's saying? I, I need some proof. Proof? Now, I know if I was God, I would have said, it's because I said so. You know, that's the only proof you need. God gave us his word. Yeah. Say, well, how do I know that's going to happen? Well, it's because God said so. You don't need anything else. But Hezekiah said, I need some proof. You know what that tells me again? God has grace. Right. Now, you know what God did? We read about it. He stopped the sun. Now, he just didn't stop it. He moved it back 10 degrees. Now, some say that's impossible. I'm going to tell you what. My God can do it all. He created it. He knows how it put together before man is still trying to figure it out. But the fact is, God in his grace gave him a, the proof. There's no shadow of doubt about it. We, uh, as I thought about that, you know, you and I are a lot like Hezekiah. You know what we have? We have the word of God. Oh, yeah, I know God said that. But, boy, I need a sign. Not, I, 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 need a, I, I, need a, I need a fuzzy, warm feeling. That's what I need. God, I need something more than that. And you know, God in his grace, oftentimes he's good. He'll, he might show you something, I don't know, but you know what, you don't need anything else. You know what the Bible tells us? It says you need to be saved. Well, I might need a sign. You don't need a sign. God said that you're in trouble, you're a sinner, and you're headed for a devil's hell. And I tell you what, he said there's one way, I provided a way, and the whole book is a whole story of the redemption of Jesus Christ. Put your trust in him. Well, I, I don't know, I might need a feeling. Now, don't get me wrong, the Spirit will knock on your heart's door, but I'm going to tell you what, God said it, you need to claim it. Many say, I don't know. I, I believe once you get saved, you ought to get baptized. I tell you, we say, I don't know. I need a little warm feeling. No, God said it. It's the right thing to do. We just need to do it. It might be some other thing. I don't know, but I, I thought, you know what God wants? If you read this book here, you know what he wants you and I to do? It's to serve him. You know why he saved you? It wasn't so such, oh, well, I've got me a home in heaven one day. No, he saved you to use you that you might have a, be a beacon, be a light someplace in your workplace, in your family, and to be used of God. You say, well, I don't know. I need some little warm, fuzzy feeling. You know what God wants us to do? Worship him. Well, you know, I've had folks... I go, well, if I get the notion. I'm talking about Christian people. 
Well, if I get a notion, if I get a feeling, and I wake up Sunday morning, and I feel like I, I will, but if not, I probably won't be there. That's, I tell you what, if you're going by your feelings, it'll steer you wrong. It can steer you wrong. It doesn't always steer you wrong. I woke up this morning, and I felt like coming to church. Amen. Amen. You know what? The Bible says that we ought to study. Say, I ain't much of a reader, and I never was. Amen. But you know what? I hope you know more about him uh, this year than you did last year. Hope you have a desire to know more. He'll help you learn. You don't have to have a fuzzy feeling, a sign from God. The Word of God says to study to show thyself approved. The Bible says we should try to share with others. And I don't care if it's just give someone a track, whatever it is. You know what the Bible says we should do? We should forgive one another. Right. Boy, that's hard now. You jumped on that one. I ain't getting on that one. But the fact of the matter is, we find that... Did you know the devil, the devil took Jesus up to pinnacle up there and he said, jump off, he says. If you're the son of God, jump off. I know the angels come get you. You know what Jesus says? He says, tempt not the Lord thy God. You know what? I'm going to believe the book. Amen. Hezekiah should have grabbed the word of God and he said, yes, hallelujah, I'm going to be healed. Fifteen years, he could put it on the calendar. Amen. <coughs> but then we find there's something that took place. Let me read for you. It indicates in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, God gave him more time. That's what's taking place here. God gave him more time. 2 Chronicles chapter 32 says in verse 24, In those days Hezekiah was sick to death, and he prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. It says, But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore was there wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, but both the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon in the days of Hezekiah. There's something that happened. You know what happened to Hezekiah? He got some pride. You know why folks don't get saved? They got pride. You know what will cause sin to get in your life? Pride. You say, oh, I'll be all right. No, you won't be all right. You can't do it by yourself. You need some help this morning. And we find that Hezekiah, he, he got pretty famous. That king Hezekiah, even he, you know what they did? They, he, they, he got in the credit. God should have got all the credit. Because Hezekiah didn't do nothing, but they destroyed the Assyrians. And boy, he got famous. Hezekiah, he's quite a king. And you know what? You'll, you can read on in the story there, and you find the Babylonians came. And they came, and they are spying him out. They want to know what's all going on over here. They're acting, oh, we like you, Hezekiah. You're a mighty guy. And he likes that. Yeah, I'm good. I'm perfect. Okay? So he shows them all his treasures. He shows them everything in his house. He goes to the temple. He shows, this is all that, that I got. And he's thinking to himself, pride, it's all because I'm a pretty good guy. Boy, you better watch out, folks. That's, not, that's, not, that's all it is. It's, it's just a little thought of thinking, me. You know what, this morning, how important it is to realize you can't do it. You need him. So we find he forgot about that grace of God. Sometimes that's how we are. We start patting ourselves on the back. Peter, I shared in Sunday, he started thinking that. He said, I'll never forsake you. I'm pretty good. I'll, I've been around you for three years. I'm tough now. He found that very night before the cock crowed. He denied him three times. And I've seen many mighty. I don't care how long you've been saved. You better watch out. Amen. The devil can destroy. The last thing you'll find about Hezekiah, there was a price, there was a penalty that was paid. You'll find that God was gracious because he repented. And so in his lifetime, Hezekiah's lifetime, he gave him 15 more years. The wrath of God didn't come down. 
But you know, you don't see anything here, uh, mighty things that he did. And it was very interesting. You know what he did? During those 15 years, he had a son. And you find that Hezekiah there as a king that was one of the best kings there ever was had a son and when Hezekiah died I'm going to read that name Manassas in chapter 21 12 years old began to reign and you know what this young boy became the worst king there ever was everything that his daddy tore down and made right he did the opposite. He even did sacrifice of children to a false god. He was the worst wicked of them all. And you know, my, uh, Hezekiah, you know, I wonder why. You know, this is why God said that when he was 39 years old, he said, Hezekiah, I'm taking you home. And you know, I often thought, you know he's going to take you home because he knows that if he lets you hang around, pride's going to come on. And it's not going to necessarily affect you. It's going to affect the generations to come. Yeah. But in his grace, he heard the cry. And you know, as, as I thought about this whole story here, we're, um, we're a lot like Hezekiah. You know, uh, I, God's given us a new year. We ought to be excited about a new year. But you know, I don't want to be a hindrance. I want to be a help. I want to be bad, my better than last year. I say, why well, didn't you do good last year, Brother Brad? I'm going to tell you, no. I can't say it like as a guy. I was perfect. But God in His grace, His Seen fit to give us a new year. Aren't you glad? Amen. And you know what? I want to be a help. I want people to know about my God. I don't know why, but he wants to use you and I. I'm weak, but he's strong. He can get us through this next year. He knows the battles we're going to have to face. He can handle them. You can't. I can't. But praise God, whatever time he gives us, I want to give it to Jesus, don't you? Let's all stand this morning. Father, we thank you. Lord, help us to stand on your promises. Lord, help us be a people of prayer. A, pa a prayer apparently will change things. And Lord, we've got much to pray about this year. We could have a raise of hands here who's got family members that are lost, that are out of God's will. And I have a God that's able. Yeah. The devil says, oh, there ain't much hope. And you know, we start believing it. But I have a God that if we would just pray, would give it to Jesus. Let him have his way. Help us to trust and obey. We'll be happy in Jesus. Father, help us this morning. Help us to not put pride aside. Help us to continue to humble ourselves before you. I'll need your help today. I'm going to need it tomorrow. I, don't want, to I want the generation to be affected in a positive way, not in a negative. I want our children, I want our grandchildren, when they, when they take up uh, our spot, Lord, help us. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for how you give what we do not deserve. Have your way. Help us to be excited about this, this life that you've given us, however long it might be. We just thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. What haven't you prayed about? First of all, we just need to give it to Him. <coughs> Maybe you're waiting for a sign. Maybe you're waiting for some, uh, for some different kind of feeling. You know, if God says it, we just need to do it.
Because he said so. He knows what's best. He knows what's best for you. I don't. He does. You don't. He does. We gotta get out of the way. It's all because of him. I thank him for my family. It's all because of him. He provides for me. It's all because of him. My health, it's all because of him. I get another day, it's all because of him. He holds the world in his hands, holds our lives in his hands. He knows all about it. If I had some more time, folks. Oh, I want to be a help, not a hindrance. He's given us more time. Help us to use it wisely.